that it is a very stressful process, but you can do it. I know you probably feel like you can't. You might feel like you're stuck. You might feel like you're never gonna pass it. But trust me, I was there too. And now I'm in my third semester of nursing school. So just try to stay uplifting, try to stay positive. I know it's really, really hard at times, but you got this. I believe in you, believe in yourself. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna be doing an updated tease video for y'all. I am in my third semester of nursing school, so I finally did pass my tease test. This video is just gonna be things to know, things to study. I do have my notes down in the description. I have all four subjects down in the description. For the math, they are step-by-step, -step, very detailed. I'll show y'all what they look like. I have science notes, um, I have really good science notes. I have English notes and reading notes. So those will be super helpful for y'all. Um, I got 100 on the math section, so hopefully if you're struggling with math, those notes will definitely, definitely help. I'll put some, like, reviews here. Also, I did take a lot of notes on what I want to talk about for the T's test, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to try to make this video quick. Um, I, this video is kind of like an updated version. It's what people have told me about the test or what I remember from the test that I didn't put in the first video. Just some stuff that I think is, is very important. So first off, I want to say is don't rush. I, this is not something that should be rushed. I did not study my first time and obviously I didn't pass. Now I'm not saying that if you don't study, you're not going to pass because some people will pass, but that was not true for me. Don't rush this. This is to get into nursing school. And it obviously it's a very competitive field. So you want to do as best as you can. Also, there are limited attempts. So if, for me, I live in Texas. I only have three attempts in one year. So you want to just try your hardest and give it your all and study for this test because it is a big deal. Study your hardest to easiest subjects. So now this is for, for my hardest to easiest. I studied science and then reading english and then math so study your hardest to easiest subject one at a time don't don't overwhelm yourself by studying more than one subject at one time because it's just going to get too much and too overwhelming what i used to study was i watched youtube videos and all my notes are over the youtube videos that i watch the practice study book that i use the atit's test I have a lot, a lot of study material, which is very, very helpful. I know I've helped a lot, a lot of people. Um, so I want to help you too. So um, the ATI practice T's tests are super, super helpful. Now, if you've never taken the T's test before, it's even more helpful because it does have the exact same order that you'll be seeing on the test. So, okay, so you have reading and then you have math, then you have science and then you have English. So again, try your hardest on each section. That could be the difference of you or that next person getting in. So just try your hardest. If you don't know it, obviously make an educated guess or like I always say, flag the question and come back to it because if you don't know it then, maybe after you've looked over that section, it will come back to you and you can get it. Okay, let me go to the science section. This is, video is gonna be over things to know for all sections. So the science section is 53 questions and you have 63 minutes to do it. Now the science section is definitely overwhelming. It is over a lot of material. So just make sure you give yourself time to study because this is a lot you don't, like I said, you don't wanna rush into it. Um, work on one system at a time. Now the systems, obviously the 10 systems is the integ. So 10 systems. If you go on the ATI website, they will tell you what they test over. And I wrote them down here just so you don't have to do that. So obviously be familiar with the anatomy of each system, the roles and hormones produced. Um, let's see. So 
what really helped me with that and i'll have all the systems in my notes broken down but i also looked at videos if you're like a visual learner like i am i loved um looking up like songs i know it's super weird but i loved looking up songs to like help me remember what was in each system or maybe the hormones that are produced in each system whatever's helpful for you i would just stick to that and i'm a visual learner so i like seeing it right there in front of me i like seeing pictures my notes have pictures they have tips on how to remember things one thing i have written down here is understand one system before going to the next and i say that because if you if you know one system and then say you move to the next and you're having a hard time understanding that one look up youtube videos or read the read in books about it don't skip to the next system if you're still having trouble on the previous one um look at old anatomy books that's what i was doing because i had notes in my book ways to help me remember things or maybe if i had something highlighted that would help me remember it any material that you can get your hands on to study is super helpful just know that it is a very stressful process um, but you can do it. I know you probably feel like you can't if you're stuck um, You might feel like you're stuck. You might feel like you're never gonna pass it But trust me I was there too and now I'm in my third semester of nursing school So just try to stay uplifting try to stay positive. I know it's really really hard at times, but you got this I believe in you believe in yourself state of matter is tested dna chemical balance equations now i will put a chemical balance equations worksheet down in the description this is what i practice for and i did take chemistry right before my t's test so i know that it was helpful because i was already familiar with it if you're not very familiar with the chemical equations i wouldn't really stress too much about it I think I only had a couple questions on my test, but definitely make yourself familiar. I wouldn't stress about knowing everything to a T, so just keep that in mind. Now, for the biology, know the rules of cell structure, and then know the metric system conversions. And then let's go to the math section. Now, I did make a 100 on my math, so I have super, super detailed notes in my notes. The math section is 36 questions, and it's 54 minutes long. Now, I do have math videos or on my channel. I have, now people have asked me, can I use a calculator? Can I bring my own calculator? No, the only calculator that is available is the one on the computer test. So you cannot bring your own calculator. They do give you a scratch piece of paper. So that's helpful. You can write everything out. The next thing I have is write everything down. Even like if you think it's not necessary, like the most simplest math, because whenever you're like super overwhelmed and stressed out, it is easy to do simple math wrong in your head. So always use that calculator, even if it's the most simplest thing. Another huge thing on the test is part over whole and percent over 100. Now, I do have this in my math section. So if you're confused by that, um, definitely go look over my math section on my channel. I do break it down very well, the part over whole and percent over 100 fraction. Um, that is a big, big thing. So if you're not familiar with that, go make yourself familiar with it because trust me, you'll be glad that you did. And then they do like a least to greatest or make these numbers from least to greatest. And it's like a percent, a decimal, a fraction. First thing you have to do is obviously you can't just look at it and be like, oh, well, this is least to greatest. You have to convert all of them to a similar form. So what I always do, um, I always convert all of them to a decimal first, just because it's easier. It's easier to to decide which is least to greatest if you're looking at a decimal versus a percent or a fraction. That's just me though. Okay, so learn how to convert a fraction to a decimal and a percent to a decimal. Solving equations of mixed signs. If there's an equation and it has a dividing, multiplication, subtraction, and addition. Always use the PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S. So parentheses first, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. And if, like I said, if that's not familiar to you or doesn't sound familiar, go to my math section of the channel and it will be super helpful and Hopefully it'll make a lot more sense once you see it worked out for you. Okay, and then solving for x, 
you don't know how to do that, I do have all those worked out on my channel. Lots and lots of word problems on the math section. On my math notes, I literally have like 60 plus word problems. Um, and they're all worked out for you. And I also have a blank copy for you to practice on. Oh, and then the last thing on the math section is place value. So ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. So it's going to say like round to the nearest thousands. So just make yourself familiar with that. Let's go over to the English section. So English section is 28 questions with 28 minutes. Now that kind of sounds freaky, like, oh, a minute per question. But the questions are typically pretty short. So no need to freak out. Uh, you will be going over spelling, uh, punctuation, parts of speech, and my big thing for parts of speech is use schoolhouse rock, schoolhouse of rock. Now, if you know what that is, you probably remember it from like elementary school or something, but it's so, so helpful. Like I said, I'm a visual person and like I need things to be stuck in my mind. It's like, um songs for parts of speech so they go over like nouns verbs verbs adjectives conjunctions interjections now all those you do need to be familiar with the schoolhouse of rock has really really good songs for that and then synonyms and antonyms and let's go to the reading section this is 53 questions and you have 64 minutes now again might sound kind of scary if you're a slow reader there are some like paragraphs and there's also like sentences there are charts so it's not as scary as it sounds and i do have a reading video also i have really good reading notes so what you'll be doing in the reading um section is you'll be summarizing a reading so you're gonna obviously read like a paragraph or read a couple paragraphs and it'll tell you to summarize it well, just go through the answer choices and make sure that what you think is the answer, if it supports each, if it supports like each paragraph. Because if it says something in the answer choice that mm, is kind of iffy, it's probably not it. Okay, a logical conclusion. So it's pretty much going to like, you'll read a text and it will say, it will say like, what's the logical conclusion? Basically an assumption based off of like the author's tone or the way the author is talking about the subject or whatever it is. Because if it's an uplifting um, article, obviously your assumption probably won't be something negative. You will be deciding what the main idea was. And again, like I said, if you go through each answer choice and it does not support the text, then that's probably not it. Determine the sequence. Now, like I said, I always write everything out. So if you use your scratch piece of paper and it will have like dates throughout the article, well, some of them, they might be mixed up. Like it might have like 1963 and then it might have 1950 and then it might have 1980. Like it could be all mixed up. So use your notebook paper that you get and kind of keep track of it like that. Determine the meaning of the word. So it'll probably say like in paragraph three, what what do they mean by using this word? And it's gonna probably be a word that you've never even heard before. But like I said, based off of the text and the it's an uplifting article or reading, it's probably not gonna be a negative word. So just use context clues and use what you think is the author's tone or the if they're highly opinionated on it. Like if they're talking good about it, if they're talking bad about it, just kind of go off of that. Um, the author's purpose. What is the author's purpose of the text? Is it to entertain you? Is it to persuade you? Now, I do have really, really good reading notes on that. Um, so for my science section or my reading section, I looked over Carolyn McAllister. Um, she's super helpful. And then compare and contrast. If it has like two articles that you're comparing, um, maybe pay attention to like the author's point of view. One one could be super positive about this subject. One could be super negative. Or if their tones are off, um, just pay attention to stuff like that. And then the simile and metaphor. I hope I did not miss anything. Now this video is like 20 minutes long. But just know that it is a very stressful process 
um but you can do it i know you probably feel like you can't if you're stuck um you might feel like you're stuck you might feel like you're never gonna pass it but trust me i was there too and now i'm in my third semester of nursing school so just try to stay uplifting try to stay positive i know it's really really hard at times but you got this i believe in you believe in yourself and good luck and also if you want the notes message me on instagram at caitlin Sedania or email me caitlin539 at gmail.com if you want any if you have any questions literally it could be about anything um i want to help you and get to your dreams just like i did um you will get through it i promise good luck peace out